that everything is really virtual because we're really limitless beings virtually using the body temple to express and communicate and reveal a sense of intimacy. So it's a virtual relationship even now. So I'm so pleased and honored to be invited to, to share a few words. And I want to begin with this opening prayer by giving thanks to the great God of the universe, entering into the spirit of gratitude and thanksgiving and dynamic appreciation that I may recognize the presence that is never an absence that is everywhere in its fullness. And as I am recognizing this divine presence, oh, something wonderful is happening because something wonderful is always happening. The spirit of the living God is always broadcasting. Let there be light, let there be beauty, let there be life, let there be intelligence, let there be the presence everywhere. I recognize this and feel so unified with it that I know that the very word in which I am speaking is the word of God announcing itself as each and every one of us announcing itself as this magnificent international yoga festival as we come to a great degree of unity, conscious oneness with the presence and the God presence in each other. Oh, we bow to that which is real in each other and give thanks for these precious moments together. I let it be. And so it is, even now, especially now. Amen. It's my joy and honor to be with you. It is my joy and my honor to present to you at this moment, the Agape International Choir under the direction of Marianne Lewis with our lead soloist being Ray Davis. Listen to this as he speaks of fantasy beyond our imagination, a cover by Earth, Wind and Fire. Listen to this.
Thank you, choir. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Marianne. Thank you, Agape House Band, for being a part of this, this rich tradition here in Rishikesh. As I'm thinking about the consciousness of unity, I'm thinking about the, the rich truth that all of us are never separated from the power and the presence and the love of God. And though we may feel a sense of separation from time to time, some more than others, underneath that sense of separation, which is a lie, by the way, we live in a field of unity with the oneness of the limitless love intelligence that governs everything. And I think about the fact that when we speak of consciousness, we must always delineate the difference between our consciousness and the content that is flowing through. I always like to, in my presentations, remind people that there is a difference between consciousness and content. Just as a great difference between the ocean and the content of the ocean. The ocean is, is H2O, it's water. And there's content in the ocean. There's pollution, mainly from human beings. There's fish. Uh, there's seaweed, uh, there's all manner of things that are uh, plankton, all manner of things that are in the ocean. But that which is in the ocean and passing through the ocean is the content of the ocean. The ocean is the ocean. Well, we are avenues of awareness. We are pure awareness. We are pure God consciousness. And then there's the content passing through. There's opinions, there's points of view, there's positionalities, and there's... Uh, uh, interpretation of past experiences. There's projections into the future. There's all manner of things that are that are moving through our consciousness that are not our consciousness. Now, when we begin to have spiritual practice, something happens when we're able to discern that the content is not us, that what we are is consciousness, that what we are is awareness itself. And when those insights occur, when those revelations occur, when those aha moments occur, when those satori moments occur, those moments are which are moments in which the eternal is breaking into time as our awareness. We become extemporal, out of time. And in that moment, that is the moment of moving into enlightenment, moving into having a revelational moment. So the work that we're doing, the work play, as I like to call it, is to provide ourselves with a level of spiritual practice where we become candidates for such insight, where we become aware that we are awareness itself, candidates for such rich, luminous revelations. And then we have a level of practice where we stabilize those insights. They're not just fly by night. They're not just moments of memory of something that's happened in the past. Oh, I had a great moment with God and now it's gone. No, our spiritual practice illuminates that we are awareness with the ability to choose choice as a function of expanded awareness. And we learn to stabilize and integrate those moments of the eternal breaking into time. We integrate it so that they are embodied so that we are embodied revelations of that which is real, which is an underlying sense of unity, oneness with the great power, the great presence, the great love of God Almighty, all beauty, all joy, all power, limitless love, intelligence. And so with, with that, that awareness, we might be asking, how do we stabilize an insight? But first of all, let me define an insight. An insight is an event that happens in our consciousness where we incrementally or suddenly become aware of or know something that we previously only believed. So we may have a belief system that leads us to a level of spiritual practice, primarily being meditation, affirmative prayer, life visioning, hanging with high-minded people in spiritual community, as we're doing here in Resikish. But we, 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 so an insight is that moment where the eternal breaks into time, you see. Now we want to stabilize that insight. How do we stabilize that insight? One, we localize the cosmic celebration. Two, whole soul devotion. Three, surrender. Four, 
activation of potential. Let's break that down. Number one, and stabilize, number one, we're localizing a cosmic celebration. We're coming to an awareness that the entire cosmos is in celebration, that it gets to participate in the realm of the divine. And what are we doing? We're localizing the cosmic celebration. So that we're allowing ourselves to get a real sense that there's, there's a celebration going on. And, and I don't mean frivolity. I don't mean just a simple party. Every square inch of creation is in cosmic celebration, that it's alive, that it's awake, that it's, in, it's, a, it's a grand participant in the realm of divinity. And our role as spiritual beings having a human incarnation is to localize that celebration. That is to be a, a walking revelation of the cosmos. We have a place in the universe and our place in the universe is to represent the entire cosmos according to our unique pattern. Now, with increasing advancement of technology, there's sometimes an alienation from nature, an alienation from each other, and an alienation from God. We're seeking to embrace in the moment of localizing the cosmic celebration, embracing mother nature at every chance we get. Embracing each other with a, a gentle bow to everyone that we meet and greet. Not necessarily walking down the street bowing, but every time we see a human being, every time we see a sentient being, there's an inward bow to the consciousness of God that's inside of that being, we're bowing. So any sense of alienation from humanity is dissolving because we all know that saying we love humanity is abstract. We have to love the humans that we see and think about, we bow. And so, uh, and then we, we embrace the presence of God. No alienation from God, the God of our understanding, we, constantly yield to this presence. So first, localize the cosmic celebration. Get a sense every single day when you wake up that there's something to celebrate. There's something good about to happen. There's something good perennially happening. We're just seeking to be receptive to it, to be available to it, to be open to it, to say yes to it, to live in the divine and sacred yes, that there's something to celebrate so that the very body temple vibrates at that level and the tonic chemicals flow through the body temple and the immune system is stabilized and the coherence of the brain happens and the stabilization of the blood pressure takes place. Oh, there is something to celebrate even in the midst of great changes going on in the world of phenomena, there is something that is ever the same and is always seeking to emerge by means of us. That is the great God of the universe. Secondly, whole soul devotion. We must find that place within us and continue to nurture that place within us in which we are wholly devoted to this presence that is never an absence. The two greatest technologies are sincerity and earnestness. Sincerity is the purity of our motivation. Whether we're starting a business, whether we're entering into a relationship, whether we're working out our body temple, whether uh, we are entering into proper nutrition for the body temple, there's a sincerity of motivation. We do not uh, work on our body temple for vanity. Uh, we don't open up a business just for profit. We don't enter into a relationship just to satisfy our hunger. This, the, the purity of motivation means that everything that we do is for the purpose of reflecting and revealing the cosmos as only we can to enter into the love ethic. So we're, so our motivation is pure to be an instrument of the divine presence. We start our business to be of service. We enter into a, a relationship to perfect our loving. We take care of the body temple that the body temple can increase its capacity to hold more cosmic energy so that we can be of greater service 
to birth the beloved community on earth as it is in the mind of infinite intelligence. So one, in purity of motivation, and that is sincerity. Second is earnestness. Earnestness means that we have some level of spiritual practice that we practice on a regular basis. Get this, whether we feel like it or not. That's earnestness. Earnestness means I wake up and do my devotion. I wake up and do my practice. I wake up and I enter into a state of meditation. I wake up and I do my study. I wake up and I have a, a degree of fellowship with like-minded people in spiritual community. We have a level of earnestness because there will be moments in our humanness where we just won't feel like. Doesn't, it's not a good day. We don't feel like it. The mind is cloudy. The body is tired. The emotions are raw. We don't feel like it. But earnestness makes us do a modicum of our spiritual practice anyway. Think of yourself perhaps as an Olympic champion. And when that Olympic champion is, is practicing their particular event, They'll wake up every single day and they'll swim the amount of laps they are to swim. They'll run around the track the amount of laps they are to run around that track. And they do it whether they feel like it or not because they know the end result of that is that they will be in shape and they will have a level of practicing the fundamentals to such a degree that they'll become subconscious and subjective. They also know that when they begin the practice, even if they don't feel like it, added energy kicks in and they end up loving to do it even when they began to feel that they didn't want to do it. Sincerity and earnestness helps you stabilize the insights that are occurring based on your desire to wake up and to catch the sense of unity with the, and your oneness with the presence that is never an absence. So there is this localizing cosmic celebration. There is whole soul devotion that leads to surrender. Surrender is a powerful word. It's a powerful way of living, living a surrendered life. Doesn't mean waving the white flag. It's not a, in this terminology, it's not a battle cry. It's not a, a, a war language. I surrender. I give up. No, 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 no. Surrender means I am giving my life over. I'm yielding the vital nerve center of my consent, as Dr. Howard Washington Thurman would describe it. I'm yielding the vital nerve center of my consent to the next stage of my own evolution, my own unfolding, that I'm involved in transformation. Trans means to go beyond the present formation of my life, physically, mentally, emotionally. I'm going beyond that particular formation, which is the condensation of previously held point of view. It's the artifact of previous points of view and opinions and positionalities and perspectives. I'm going beyond that. I'm surrendering yielding like the caterpillar, pillar, caterpillar yields to the butterfly and the butterfly becomes a new creature in the mind of God. We are surrendering, living a surrendered life, saying in substance that there's more. The presence of God is infinite and the presence of God being infinite wants to emerge as me. I surrender to it, I yield to it. Now, of course, we bump up against the dynamic of the egoic perception that does not know the difference between enlightenment and annihilation. Because the egoic perception does not tarry with the unknown. It doesn't, it doesn't live in the unknown. It's afraid of the unknown. However, we on our spiritual path celebrating coming into localizing the, the cosmic celebration, coming into a deep sense of devotion and surrendering, living a surrendered life. The unknown is our friend. The unknown carries such goodies because it's outside of our present paradigm. Our present paradigm, we know our present paradigm. We, 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 we take our cue from our present paradigm, but it's outside of our present paradigm, our present way of thinking that the infinite nature of God gets to come and express through us. 
in a most powerful, magnificent, majestic, and beautiful way. And so surrender, we start to love the word surrender. I'm yielding the vital nerve center of my consent to that which is within me that I don't even have words for, that it is beyond my wildest imaginings, but it is magnificent, it is beautiful. Why? Because the presence of God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the presence of God never contradicts nor compromises its own nature. It doesn't change up on itself. It is beyond the human concept of good. It is the all good that is consistent with itself. And so the unknown carries more and more and more and more and more of that which is of the all good that is seeking to emerge through you and through me in our life, in our relationship, in our business enterprises and all the things that we would be about to activate what our potential, which is that fourth dynamic. Remember, we're here to localize a cosmic celebration. We're here to invite ourselves into a whole soul devotion to this presence that's closer than our breathing and nearer than our hands and feet, more real than the very chairs we're sitting on with a great degree of sincerity and earnestness. We're here to live a surrendered life that allows us to understand what Meister Michael, Michael Eckhart meant, the great mystic, when he said that I see God through the same eye that God sees me. That great surrender allows the depth of unity to take hold and be active in us. And then we live to activate our potential. Do you know how important this is? It means we wake up in the morning, go to bed at night with a desire to have the latency, the latent potential be activated. And that governs your intention. It governs the thoughts that you obtain in your awareness. Remember, we don't just think thoughts, we obtain thoughts. We obtain thoughts from the sea of mental garbage, which are thought forms emerging from humans who have a sense of separation, or we obtain thoughts from the mind of God, which is called inspiration. When we're seeking to activate potential, we become available to obtain thoughts called inspiration. The presence of God is thinking through us. We're inspired. We go beyond the three dimensions. And there's something very painful about individuals that are dimensionally challenged that only live in 3D and live according only to the five senses and what they can smell and taste and touch and hear and see. Very painful life. We're not dimensionally challenged when we live a surrendered life and seeking to activate our potential. As multidimensional beings, we become privy to the thought of the presence, its inspiration that pulls us to a greater expression of reality. And the potential that is within us becomes activated. Think about this for a moment. You want to activate your potential. Now, what is the gift of that? Bliss. Whenever potential is activated, we get bliss hits. Many people are not, they're not even aware that bliss exists. They just want a kind of a pseudo happiness based upon uh, circumstances in their life being a certain way or plans going the way they want them to. But bliss is something else. Bliss is the activation of your potential that grants you a perfect peace of mind. As scripture says, I will, those who, whose eyes are upon me, I grant them perfect peace. Peace of mind that passes human understanding and a great degree of bliss regardless of circumstances. Many people don't get that. They only have a pseudo happiness based on everything being the way they want it to be. But when you live to activate potential, <laughs> bliss, ecstasy, a joy, you see it in the Swami's face, his countenance, his smile.
so with the desire to localize the cosmic celebration, the desire to feel into a whole soul devotion, to live the surrendered life and to activate potential every day because you don't want to be this same person this time next year. You want to have something more about you that's been activated, something that you don't know about yourself. You want to know some gift, some talent, some capacity. You want to, like, like, a, like a light bulb, maybe 60 watts or 80 watts or 100 watts. You have the capacity for the infinite luminosity of the spirit to flow through you. You are up leveling your wattage to carry more energy through the four domains that I've just mentioned. As a matter of fact, when we think about the domains that human beings live in, they live in four domains, survival, adaption, transformation, and dissolution. Most people live in survival. Even when they get more than they need, they still have a kind of a survival energy running them because there's an imaginary hole of lack and limitation there. And then there's adaption. We learn to adjust and adapt to the world in the world of phenomena. Some people stay there. You who are listening to this and are seeing this are coming into the domain called transformation. That is, you're living to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. As the scripture would say from the Bible, do not be conformed to the world, but to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is a high calling to live for transformation and activation of potential. Fourth domain is dissolution. Whenever you enter into a higher frequency than that which no longer, longer belongs to you on a frequency level or on a vibrational level begins to dissolve. Sometimes it makes you feel that you're going backwards, but you're actually pruning and uprooting that which no longer serves the higher frequency of your life. Survival, adaption, transformation, dissolution, and then you live primarily from transformation with dissolution occurring and your intuition assists you in adapting to circumstances. I want you to feel it to that, what I just said. Because underlying all of this, unity, oneness. One God, one power, one presence, one life, one love, one intelligence everywhere in its fullness and by means of us is seeking to emerge and become more itself as each and every one of us. You are a one of a kind being. You. There's no one else like you. When the spirit of the living God recreated itself and named it you, it did not create another you because the presence of God is infinite and would not repeat itself. So you are an unrepeatable nomina held in the mind of the infinite, loaded and coded with the frequency and the vibration and living information as to the potential and possibilities that are within you that you are to set free through your intentionality and through your spiritual presence practice. So think about this. The presence of God got you right the first time. No do-overs, no repeats. You are the only you in the entire cosmos. So you have a mandate to come into a greater expression of you or you will not be done. You're one with the presence. I want you to feel into what I've just said. And as you feel into what I just said, I want you to now listen to the Agape Youth Choir under the direction of Sheila Nichols and Marianne Lewis. Listen to my sweet young folks sing, imagine, as we allow for ourselves to allow for our imagination to be an angel of God, seeing the great possibilities of our life, the great possibilities of the world, the great possibilities of the planet, the great possibilities of the nations living as one. 
knowing that the leaves on the tree are for the healing of the nations, for the leaves on the tree are on those branches that are on those trunks, never competing with each other, but living directly from the source of that tree. Unity. Listen to the young folks. Open up your heart and listen. bringing to life John Lennon's song, in which many people don't know that Brother Dick Gregory added a lot of the lyrics to that song as he was working with uh, Okoyono, you know, Oko, Yo, Okoyono, John Lennon's wife. 
my tongue got in front of my eye tooth and I couldn't see a word I was saying. But he was working with John and, and his wonderful wife. And he started saying, you know, imagine. And he started saying these lyrics and John said, let me write that down. Anyway, some of what Dick Gregory was teaching became a part of that beautiful song. And it's more to this story, but that's not why we're here. I want to take you through a meditative process now dealing with those four points that I brought up. I would ask you to gently close your eyes, put your hands in your lap, and today let's have the hands facing upward as a sign of joyful devotional receptivity. Let's touch the thumb of the forefinger as a sign of a transcending ego perception. Take a deep breath and bring your shoulders to your ears Squeeze everything and release. Just tap at the space between the eyebrows as an indication that you can see without physical eyes and you can hear without physical ears. That you can see and hear with pure consciousness. Put a slight smile on your face. and get a real sense that right where you are is love. That you are indeed surrounded by a divine loving presence that is love itself. Perhaps to assist you, you can think of a moment in your life where you were touched by unconditional love. That is the love of God operating in the human heart, as Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. would describe it. The love without condition, the love without agenda, the love not based on merit or demerit, just the total givingness of the life of God is love. No withhold. You may want to think about someone in your life, like a grandparent or a teacher or someone that got you, someone that saw you and didn't want anything from you. They just knew who you were and you felt love unconditionally flow through you. Become aware of this love, this memory. Strike the mystic chord of memory and feel the love. When you hear me clap my hand, multiply this love effect by 10. Take a breath and let it magnify tenfold. When you hear me clap my hand, magnify the feeling tone of divine love times 50. Breathe in, magnify times 50. Be surrounded by love. When you hear the clap of my hand, magnify it exponentially by 100. <laughs> Breathe in. Magnify by 100. As Mother Mary said, my soul doth magnify the Lord. We're magnifying the Lord's love. The great God of the universe, love. So in this feeling tone of love, we feel safe and secure. We feel love. We move to domain number one, localizing the cosmic celebration. Think of a moment in your life in which you entered into a moment of celebration and you really enjoyed it. It may have been your birthday party or an anniversary the birth of a child, or you may, have, you may have caught the natural celebration that occurs when you walk through a forest and you feel the trees bending to your divinity. Just feel into the celebration that's happening 
throughout all the star systems, the oceans, the ground upon which we're walking. It's holy. The celebration that has happened humanly. Just allow these configurations of celebrations to augment your awareness so that with every breath that you're taking, you are amplifying the feeling tone of celebration. Not mere partying, but the celebrating of life itself, celebrating that you exist at all, celebrating that you, like all of nature, get to participate in the realm of the divine, activate this cosmic celebration within you and let your face smile. When your face smiles, you're adding face value to your countenance. Oh, feel it. Feel the tingling of the body temple. It's in full on celebration. The bottom of your feet, your ankles, your knees, your thigh, your hamstrings, your glute, your stomach, your pelvic area. Your heart is in celebration. Your lungs, your pancreas, your intestines, your thyroid, your throat, your chin, your face, your eyes, the top of your head, the back of your head, your nose, your dental cavity, your back, your spine. Oh, from the base of the spine to the top of your head, feel the celebration going on that you are alive and that God energy is pulsing through you. We are localizing the cosmic celebration and we are seeking to sustain and stabilize any insights into reality that may occur. Now we enter into the feeling tone of a whole soul devotion. If you have ever been devoted to anything, an artist is sometimes devoted to their craft and to the falling in love with their instrument until the instrument moves from making sounds to making music. You may have become devoted to your mate, your friend, until their happiness is as important to you as your own happiness. Feel the frequency of devotion. And let us become whole soul devoted to the presence that is never an absence, might be invisible to the sensorium, the five senses, but we see it with our consciousness and become so devoted to being an instrument of the divine, whole soul devotion becoming magnified with every breath that we take. Say to yourself or say out loud, I am devoted to the presence of God, the God of my understanding, which is life itself. Say to yourself or out loud, I love God. I love life. I love beauty. I love excellence. I love intelligence. I love love. Say to yourself, I love loving. Loving to love is a very high state of consciousness that comes through whole soul devotion. And from whole soul devotion, we wrap our awareness around 
the frequency of the depth of surrender. We enter into the feeling tone of I surrender all. Everything I was, everything I am, everything I hope to be, I surrender the vital nerve center of my consent to excellence. I surrender the vital nerve center of my consent to divine beauty. I surrender the vital nerve center of my consent to pure compassion, kindness, generosity, peace, infinite gratitude. I surrender all. Say it, I surrender all to the loving presence that is never absent. Come with me into this realm. Let go of any fear around surrender for all you're ever doing is giving up the lesser for the greater. Surrendering to excellence, surrendering to the presence reorders your priorities so that you bump into the last domain that we spoke about today. Your priority is to discover, uncover, activate your potential. Say out loud, I'm living to activate my potential. Say out loud, I will not waste my potential. And be aware that potential is always bigger than any problem you're facing. That is a sacred mystical law. Potential is bigger than problem. Possibility is bigger than problem. In this meditative moment, we're celebrating, you're embracing and localizing the cosmic celebration, entering into a state of whole soul devotion, living the surrendered life, giving up the lesser for the greater. Discovering, uncovering, and activating your potential is your intention. So that everything bends according to the vibration that you're carrying. The entire universal law bends itself to this feeling that you're now having and whole new worlds open up. Worlds that are right here that you cannot see right now. Paradigm blindness is keeping you from seeing this infinite possibilities that are right here, but, but no longer. As you're celebrating, localizing the cosmic celebration and entering into whole soul devotion and surrendering the lesser for the greater, entering to the field of excellence and seeking to activate potential, oh, you're starting to see like you have never seen before. What do you see? Not with your eyes. Insight. What do you see with consciousness about the possibilities for your life? does God have in store for you? What do you have to give and share and shine and radiate? Come. Be 
you are here on purpose, with a purpose, to reveal the face of divinity, to activate your potential that you may live in the consciousness of bliss, and the waves that emerge from you are a blessing, and the wake you leave behind you is a blessing. And from this moment on, everything works together for your individual good, for you now know clearly unity. You are one with the one. Removing from the consciousness of I want to be number one to I want to be one consciously with the one. And here we pray once again, O oh, infinite spirit, Lord God almighty, divine presence, limitless love intelligence, great God of the universe, mother, father God, presence with no absence, how great thou art. How infinite and divine is thy perfect and holy name, thy divine nature in me and as me, in we and as we, how great thou art. It is so good to speak the word from this sense of unity for each and every individual ear today, knowing that their life is divine and that this divine life is so coursing through their spiritual veins that every organ and action and function of their body temple is under the governance of their celestial body that is light and luminosity, health and vitality and vigor and the mental body is clear and the emotional body is pure and the subtle bodies are pristine. Physical body reflects and reveals the fundamental order of the universe Oh, I am speaking the word for each of us now that we may be free today. That spiritual liberation, moksha, may reign supreme in our heart and that from this moment on, everything unfolds in the most perfect way and that we become the great ambassadors of peace representing the next stage of human evolution for such a time as this. that the world is better because of us. That's the mandate that we carry. I give thanks for this. I live in perpetual gratitude and allow it to be so. And so it is. Even now. Especially now during these unprecedented times. Especially now. So be it. So be it. Amen. As you slowly open your eyes, I present to you once again the Agape International Choir for this powerful festival of lights, of yoga, of unity. Listen to this. This song speaks of why we're here. Listen.
I know you felt something with that. I was here. You want to be able to say that. I was here. I made a vibrational imprint. We're not here to not make a, a footprint on the earth. We're here to make a, a vibrational love imprint on the earth. A peace imprint, a joy imprint, a generosity imprint, a creativity imprint, you see. A vibrational imprint. Sadhaji, Swami Chetanan, Sarasat, Saraswataji, thank you for your great work.
Thank you for pulling us all together. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It is my joy to participate, participate with you once again. Swami Chitanam. Sadhguruji. And all of those that are gathering. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. We here in the Agape Nation celebrate you in this evolutionary collaboration that makes a mighty difference on the planet at this time in human history and beyond. Thank you for the invitation in receiving the gift that myself, my children's choir, my adult choir have been able to offer. So we stand tall in the awareness that the presence of God is for us and never against us. And that from this moment on, everything is unfolding in the most perfect way, even beyond what we can physically see that the underlying unity in the, in the divine order of the universe, the implicate order shows up in our life as great opportunities and infinite possibilities. This is what I know for sure. That is our benediction. God bless you all.